Today I want to talk about how to operate a front-end loader on a small tractor and specifically in this case a loader with a four-in-one bucket. So I'll just take you through the rig quickly so that you know which parts I'm talking about as I go through the video. So let's take a look at the rig. This is a small uh, tractor, it's a Case 35B with full automatic uh, gears. The front end loader operates off the hydraulic, so obviously the engine's got to be running at the time and I'll take you through all the controls in a moment, but let's just have a quick look at the rig that I've got here. Right, now obviously in the front you'll have the front end loader and it's an optional attachment to a tractor. It doesn't come standard with the tractor, so let's have a look at it. Um, it's obviously got a whole lot of joints so that you can move in all sorts of directions but the bucket itself in this case being a four in one bucket you'll notice that it's got a, a joint just there and that allows the bucket to open into a pair of jaws which is very useful and I'll show you how we use that as we go through this video so that's the front end obviously controlled by hydraulics here and the hydraulic cables run all the way to the back of the tractor to what we call the joystick now some some tractors will have levers for different hydraulics but all the hydraulics in this tractor come off this joystick and I'll show you the movements of that in a minute um, but um, this tractor being fully automatic is great because if you look here all you've got is two pedals one pedal is for forward and one pedal is for reverse so there's no clutch there's no gear stick uh, everything is operated with those two pedals and all the hydraulics can be operated while you're driving around and that makes it a hang of a lot easier. And then obviously you've got your accelerator here and then coming around to the other side we have your gear ratio lever and you can change your gear ratios from high to medium to low depending on how much power you need for the particular job you're doing. I normally set it on medium which is where it is now and then you've got the brake and you've got your mounting bracket for getting on the tractor and it's recommended you always get on from the mounting bracket because if you try and get on from the other side you might accidentally step on one of the accelerator pedals and fall off and injure yourself then at the back what I've got is a carry-all which is attached to a three-point linkage at the back also controlled by hydraulics and I'll discuss the significance of this a bit later and then you've got the roll bar because tractors have a tendency to roll over and kill you so the roll bar is there to protect you and in addition there's a seat belt to keep you in the seat if your tractor does become unstable now coming back to the controls uh, this joystick has various actions and each action does something to the bucket. So I'll just go through them with you. So if I want to lift the bucket off the ground, I just pull straight back. If I want to lower the bucket, I push straight forward. If I want the bucket to tilt upwards or towards me, I pull the lever towards me so that makes sense and if I want the bucket to tilt away from me or downwards I push the lever away from me now those are the standard movements of the bucket but this being a four-in-one bucket the jaws can also open and close and uh, the way you control that is if you want the jaws to open and close there's a little button just there very soft touch so you need to put your thumb on top and if you want the the jaws of the bucket to close you pull it towards you 
if you want the jaws of the bucket to open you press the button and push it away from you so just remember that if you don't want the jaws to open don't put your thumb there because it's quite sensitive and uh, you might open the jaws when you've got a full load of rocks or something and distribute them all over the road so good idea to keep your thumb off there unless you're operating the jaws and then finally if you want to lock the bucket there's a there's a little lever here which you can push in or pull out to lock the bucket and if you forget how to use it conveniently they've got a little diagram there which tells you everything that I've just told you on how to work the joystick so that's very useful Right, now I'm just going to demonstrate all those movements with the tractor running and uh, the manufacturers recommend that you only run the tractor at 1500 revs or higher uh, otherwise the hydraulics are not going to work properly and the automatic system also needs some pressure before you can operate it. So I'm going to turn on the tractor now and you won't be able to hear me talking but you can see what I'm doing with the joystick. Now another thing I wanted to point out to you is this little bar here is very useful. It's got a notch, a notch in it there and that notch tells you when the bucket is in a position that when you've lowered it to the ground this will be more or less parallel to the ground. Now because the bucket lowers on an arc it's not parallel to the ground when you've got it up. It only is parallel to the ground if you're on that notch when it's actually on the ground and the ground has to be fairly level for that to happen. So it's a very useful thing because when you're in the driver's seat, it's very hard to see uh, your bucket from this angle and see what it's doing. So that's just a great help. And then if you like, you can make little marks on it uh, if you want to dig you've got to put your bucket at a different angle or if you want to carry things your bucket has to be at a different angle as well so you can put little marks on this bar just to help you in the beginning to uh, to know where your bucket is right just I just want to demonstrate to you uh, the hydraulics will work only uh, in a downward position because I haven't got the engine started so I just want to show you how that notch moves when I touch the joystick. If I take the joystick and I push it away from me the bucket will move you'll see and now if you have a look at the notch it's moved into a different position so that notch obviously moves with the bucket and tells you what angle your bucket's at. Right the first task I'm going to perform is loading the bucket with some soil and uh, as I said to you earlier you can set the bucket's angle by using that rod uh, and getting it on the notch and you'll notice that I've got the rod right on the notch so that my bucket is now level with the ground and then you'll notice as I move in to load the bucket I'll drive forward slowly and I'll be tipping the bucket towards me and at the same time lifting the whole arm of the bucket up. So there's three things you have to do. One is drive slowly into the, the mound that you're loading, then you tip the bucket slowly a few times until you've got it into the carrying position which is like that 
and then uh, you lift the arm at the same time. So all those three things are happening at the same time. It takes a bit of getting used to, but uh, with a little bit of practice, uh, it's quite easy to do. The other thing is before you start, you need to select a gear ratio that's going to be powerful enough to do the job you want. I usually use the middle gear, uh, the middle gear ratio, and that, uh, that usually does the job for me. But if I find that the tractor is wanting to stall, then I know I haven't got enough power, so I either up my revs or I go to a lower gear ratio. You'll notice there's a dog running around, his name's Red, and there's nothing I can do about him. Now you can see I've got a healthy bucket load there and that was pretty easy to do. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to unload the bucket. There's a couple of ways of doing it. One is you can tip the whole bucket forward like that uh, by moving the joystick away from you. Uh, the other thing you can do is open the jaws and let the soil drop straight out. It's more accurate to open the jaws if you want to get your soil in a specific spot. Uh, when, you, when you're tipping it out like that, it tends to go over a whole region. Then the other thing you can do is if you want to spread your load, uh, you can tip it and drive at the same time and spread your load out. So I'll show you all those three movements now. So that's how you unload the bucket, however you want to. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to dig. Now, with digging, you need to dip. With digging, you need to dip your bucket a little bit so that it obviously engages the the soil, and then you drive forward and you scoop. So I'll show you that maneuver, and then after that, I'm going to show you. Um, you can use your bucket for leveling as well, but only for soft stuff. You can't go and level rocks and things because you'll damage your equipment. Now you would have noticed with the leveling that I um, tipped the bucket like that and then dragged it across the mound that I'm trying to level. 
Um, as I said, be careful with very hard things because uh, that might damage your equipment. Um, similarly, you can use it in a forward motion for leveling, almost like a bulldozer, but again, it's got to be soft stuff. If you use it on very hard stuff, you're going to damage uh, the bucket. Right, now I'm going to show you how the jaws operate. I'm going to pick up this railway sleeper with these jaws and I'll put it up there. Just while we're on the subject of carrying things, when you're traveling, try and keep your bucket quite close to the ground. Not too close so that it digs, but say about a half a meter off the ground because then your tractor's more stable because tractors have a habit of rolling over. And uh, another point is if you're going up a slope, go up at 90 degrees. Don't go up the slope at an angle because then you're likely to tip over. So uh, those points are worthwhile remembering. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drive forward with the tractor and just engage the bottom jaw first because the, the sleeper has to be parallel to the bucket before I can grab it. So what I sometimes do is just touch it with the bottom jaw and push slightly until it moves into a position that's parallel to the bucket and then I close the jaws and pick it up. So I'll demonstrate that to you now. We'll first come up to it, just nudge it a little bit until it straightens and then clamp it and pick it up. So here we go. So that's all there is to it if you're using the jaws. Now occasionally you might come across a lock that's too wide for the jaws and you want to move it. And what I've done in those situations is I've got a, a toe strap and lassoed the end of the lock, picked it up, picked up the one end and then reverse and drag it to wherever you want to go. I'll demonstrate that to you in a minute. Right, this is how I would move a very large log that won't fit in the jaws of the, of the bucket. Um, what I normally do is just get a toe strap like this and put it around like a lasso. So the tighter you pull it, the tighter it grips. And then thread it through the jaws of the bucket like that. And then we just clamp it there, lift the front end of the log up a little way and then reverse and just drag it to wherever we want to go. So I'll just demonstrate that at the moment. Now finally, I was going to say something about the carry-all and what I use it for. Uh, basically, the carry-all is a, something to carry equipment in. If you're working in the field doing fencing or something like that, you can put the, the equipment in the carry-all. Very useful thing. Um, but what I use it for sometimes is if I'm carrying a very heavy weight in my bucket in the front end of the tractor, uh, it has a tendency to tip that way. So you can counterbalance the weight in your bucket by loading something like bricks or something in the center of your carry-all and you can use that as a counterbalance. Um, you can actually buy a lump of steel which connects to your three-point linkage which is called a counterbalance uh, and do the same job. 
but I find the carry all such a useful addition to the tractor uh, that I've always used that. The only disadvantage of a carry all is that it's quite large and it affects your maneuverability if you're in a very tight space but that's never really worried me. Now obviously as with any machinery it's essential that you read the manufacturer's instructions on how to look after the equipment and all the safety guidelines that they propose in those manuals. Now if you found this useful please like and share this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Just scroll right down to the bottom and you'll find the comment section there. You can leave us a message there. Thank you very much for watching.